good afternoon everyone how are you all doing did you have your lunch how many of you are feeling sleepy nobody very nice um how long it's been that you have started preparation 5 months 1 month and any other number 1 year okay then anybody else just started yesterday anybody like that yes excellent you started yesterday ha huh? three weeks ago okay it almost like yesterday because you don't even recognize when the day starts and when the day ends right so how many of you have already chosen your option kind of not yet which one you have or you have already chosen which one how many of you are wondering which optional to choose okay. how many of you are still logically reasoning out which optional is going to be the next optional for the coming year every year is the year of one optional right maybe one year is that of geography another year is that of bread another year is that of anthropology and another year is that of sociology and one year was that of mathematics yeah one of the uh, ias officers from udp had optional of mathematics i don't remember his name but he was one of the uh, top person from karnataka in 2013 or 14 and he had scored out of out in maths right that's a possibility in mathematics of course upsc will scale down it will not give uh, out of out but in terms of his answering he was out of out right so that is what is possible when you get into the numbers anyways so how many of you have come here to see the taste of sociology what sociology is all right so you had the uh, orientation of anthropology for most of you some of you were waiting there so now we will understand what sociology is and why sociology is important as a subject okay now i will not get into the details of what optional subject is and so on because uh, you know what optional subject is like there are two papers part 1 and part 2 or paper 1 and paper 2 and paper 1 is that of uh, western thinkers and western uh, sociology and paper 1 paper 2 is indian perspective so that holds true for psychology anthropology uh, and most of the humanity subjects right so yeah so i will skip on these things and directly get into the syllabus of what is there in sociology because that is something very important for us to understand because unless you know the syllabus there is no point of learning that and when you want to or when you are trying to understand the syllabus it is also important to understand what is the scope of these topics that you have and what are the things that you are going to learn and how can you apply it in your day to day life right so when i took optional sociology as my choice because when i started my preparation i had psychology and sociology as two optionals we were supposed to take two optional subjects at that point of time and then upsc changed the rule and then it made or they they asked us to take one optional so uh, sociology as a subject is very dynamic in nature and how much ever you learn about society there is much more to learn that's one point secondly apart from learning through the books you get to learn a lot of things from day to day life you do not have to go somewhere to understand what this subject is right so for example if you want to learn botany you will have to find out different plants and then you will have to go to the forest and then understand what are the different kinds of plants what are the different characteristics of them and so on right or any other subject for that matter has its own uh, i mean areas of study but for sociology the interesting thing is it is just around us and we 
since being part of the society, right from our family, we, we can start observing what is happening in the society and associate with the concepts and then understand them better, right. So, that is another advantage with sociology. The third advantage with sociology is, sociology is considered as a small portion in paper 1 of your GS where you have to study about Indian society in terms of examination perspective. And secondly, in the essay you will get one or other social issue related topic, either it could be women, it could be children, it could be something or the other which is a core of society, correct. And if you have a knowledge of sociology, again I do not want you to write sociological terms in your essay because that, that it actually gives you, gives the examiner a hint that okay, he is a, he or she is a sociology student, then the expectation will be more, right. When you, when the examiner gets to know that you are a sociology student, then they will expect you to try to talk about thinkers, etc., etc. That too, unfortunately, if the sociologist himself is correcting your paper, then they will be more focused, right. However, if you learn the trick of putting those concepts, but in a generic term or generic way, then it will be easy for you to get good marks because that will impress the examiner. Right, because general studies, any paper in general studies for that matter, they want you to be a generalist when you are writing, right. Even if you are a student of economics, when you are writing economics answers, of course, you have to use certain key terms, but it should not look like extremely technical in terms of its nature, because the moment they get a smell of your background, then they want more from you. That is how intellectuals are always like that, isn't it? then they get into an ego clash with you that who knows more. So, we do not want to fight with your, with our examiners, we just want good marks from them, say thanks and get the uh, posting and then tata bye bye, right. So, that is what the idea is. So, that is another advantage in terms of essay and of course, when you are looking at a case study in GS4, the ethics paper. It is also important to understand the intricacies of Indian society, because every society is very different from each other. Whatever Aristotle or Plato has said, which is, which was applicable for the European society, may not be exactly applicable to Indian society, right. Or whatever uh, Abraham Lincoln has said, may not be exactly applicable to Indian society, right. So, that is where Understanding of Indian society is also equally important, so that you will be able to uh, apply things in the Indian context. Uh, just to give an example, how societies differ, I work as a psychologist in my profession and I get a lot of clients from US and Europe, they, they are not the native Americans or Europeans, they are the NRIs non-residential whatever Indians we call and their, uh, their problem that they face there in case if they are going through any mental health challenge, when they reach out to a therapist who is locally available and when they talk about the joint family system and uh, the in complexities of that, the therapist there does not even understand what the system is, correct, because there by that age of 18, you are thrown out of the house, then you have to live on your own. The parents are no more taking your responsibility, right. And in their old age, you will give a damn about them, right. It is their old age, it is their problem, correct. The so social structure is very different, which vis a vis in Indian society, there are children who are dependent on their parents even at the age of 30 or even 40, correct. Even after having their own children, still they are dependent on their parents to make a decision, right. You might have seen such people too. So, this is where Indian society works in a very different way than any other society. I mean, for example, Australian society for that matter or people in Australia, you, we are all well versed with WhatsApp, is not it? We type like anything, but if you speak to Australians, they hate WhatsApp or they, many of them do not even know what WhatsApp is, 
only those who have connections with India or they are doing business with Indians or doing working with Indians, they only have installed WhatsApp in their phone, otherwise they do not install, they prefer emails even today. Can you send me an email? Even Germans for that matter rarely use WhatsApp. We are the crazy guys. Whatever the new app gets launched, we are the ones to adopt uh, experience and uh, that is why all the beta versions are given to Indian Indians first because we are the early risk takers with any app and we give very nice feedback. This is, I mean we are very good in giving worst feedback also, best feedback also, right. So, this is how Indian society is very different and that is why uh, learning sociology is very important because as bureaucrats, again this is the application at a later point of time, when you become a bureaucrat, you are going to apply or you are going to work with this Indian society itself and sometimes you may be an expert in your own area, but you may not be an expert in handling the people. Right? So, if you have observed some of the major MNCs have leaders who are miserably failing to deal with the employees because technical knowledge is different from handling people. Handling people needs a different skill altogether and as bureaucrats you are going to handle people not just in your office, if you are getting into services like administrative service or police service and so on you will have to deal with people on a day to day basis and that needs a better understanding of social structure and processes and so on. So, that is why sociology is a subject which not only helps in, in terms of your examination, but also in terms of a career in bureaucracy, right. Now, let us get into the intricacies or details of the syllabus. So, first chapter is dealing with sociology as the discipline, where we will be studying about whatever the, uh, again sociology was a very new discipline compared to all the humanities subjects like economics or philosophy or anthropology and it, it, it was born in the Europe because of couple of sudden changes in the India, I mean in the society and uh, in the first chapter we will be understanding what, re, I mean what were the factors that were reasons for the evolution of a subject like or a discipline like sociology. What was the need of having sociology as a discipline, right. So, for anything for that matter, whenever we have something, we need to understand why did this even come into picture, right. For example, we have all, all of us have mobile phones now. What was the need of having a mobile phone? We were happy with the telegram, is not it? or the postal service, you must have, uh, whether anyone has watched this movie Border, Hello, an old movie, where one of the songs was very famous, Chitti Ai Hai, which is like the soldier has gone back to the battlefield and he sends a letter and the family members are waiting for that letter, because after reaching there, he has sent the letter and after a month, the of month or two letter will come and reach. The current situation is like you are updating live, you are sending live location and expectation is you want immediate reply. If the other person does not reply on time, you feel embarrassed, disrespected, correct. And uh, the life has become so fast that everything is instantaneous, instant coffee, instant tea. Right, earlier people would make so, take so much of time in preparation of tea as well, but now everything has become instantaneous and that is what the dynamics of society and why am I bringing all these simple things is also because it is, these are all part of society. Earlier people used to sit together in a family and talk to each other, share with each other and so on. Now, how many of you take out time to share with your family members? Even if you share, how much do you share, right? You share only the things that are 
required for the dealings that you need to do. If you need money, if you need other support, if you need something else, you will share. Do you really share from the bottom of your heart whatever you are going through? For example, uh, when we start UPSC preparation itself, initially we will be in a very Josh mode. How is the Josh? If somebody asks, you will say hi. But as the day goes, Josh gets reduced. Then when somebody asks, how is the Josh? What? <laughs> so this kind of situation comes and when the family members ask you, your one auntie will be there, she will be keep keeping on your life. <laughs> she will keep on asking what is happening with this stress. And you get so irritated with it, but still you can't do anything with that. So these are the kind of social structures that we have and we are also becoming very secretive in our approach. So that is how initially we are going to study about sociology as a discipline, how it evolved, why did it evolve, what was the need for that discipline to come into existence when we already had other disciplines like economics, anthropology, philosophy and etc, etc. Then comes sociology as a science. How many of you are engineers here? How many of you are coming from scientific background like a basic science, BSc, MSc, something like that? How many of you are doctors, dentists or MBBS or Ayurveda? You are a doctor? Okay. And uh, so, I mean overall if I look at around 50 to 60 percent is coming from science, right? If I simply say something to you, will you agree with me or will you ask me proof? Where is the proof? What is the proof? Suppose I ask, uh, suppose I say God exists, God is right here. Will you all agree? Why? I am saying no, I am your teacher. <laughs> Does not matter, is not it? Whether you are a teacher or prime minister, we need proof, correct? So that is what the scientific temper that had already evolved in the society where people were moving towards the scientific exploration and when that was the scenario, the early sociologists who gave rise to this kind of new discipline had to kind of argue with or establish or prove to the other scholars that sociology is also a science because at that point of time everyone believed that anything is scientific is of the higher value. If it is unscientific, then they will discard it. Even today that happens, right? If you get very good score in 10th standard, generally you are sent to science, right? Parents will say, even if you want to study arts, parents will say you have got a very good score. You learn science only till PU. After that we will not force. And unfortunately, if you get very good score in PU also, then they will say finish graduation, do an engineering. Later on, even if you want to become a full time artist, we are good, we will not force you. And once you become an engineer, then they will say, now wait, after so much of hard work you have become an engineer. And that too you have got a placement from uh, IBM, why will you leave it? You start working there, you can do art anyway on the weekends, you know. Right. <laughs> so, this is how science is always, cons I mean I, there is no disrespect for any uh, non, uh, I mean humanity or commerce students, every subject is important, but in society that is how we perceive and even at that point of time European society perceived science as the supreme and that is where this kind of competition for the sociologists came where they had to prove sociology as a science. Then comes research methods, again research methods is also important part of sociology as a science so that they could show how you can conduct research, you can conduct experiments, you can come out with quantitative inferences. You understand this quantitative and qualitative? Say for example, if I say in this whole class, how many of you are sleeping very well? 
how many of you are sleeping very well? Huh? How many of you are sleeping very well? No, no, on a day to day basis, not now. <laughs> Right now I can see all glittering eyes, man, how can I ask that question? <laughs> so, on a day to day basis, how many of you are sleeping very well? Raise your hands once again. Ok, I can say around 15, 20 students. This is quantitative. Now, if I ask, what is the quality of your sleep? How do we measure that? She may say, I am sleeping very well. How do I know what is very well? That is a qualitative aspect. So, quantitative is something that is measurable, qualitative is something that is experienced, it is subjective in their own interpretation. Like when we serve food, some people may say it is excellent food, some people may say it is ok food or it is decent food etc. etc. So, these are all the quantitative measurements, but we can uh, sorry qualitative measurements, only quantifying is some that is possible based on numbers. So, Research methodology has both qualitative and quantitative methods for us to understand and qualitative method is very important in sociology because we are dealing with people. Everything cannot be measured with a metric like a doctor can come and weigh, measure your BP right with that machine. What do you call that machine as? The original machine not the one which you press the button and it will karke that not that one the, uh, the mercury one. Doctor, please do not tell me. <laughs> Speak more manometer, right. Actually, it is the best instrument to really recognize the BP, but these days we are only using this electronic ones, and that is why sometimes it says 80 20, and within 5 minutes it will say 140 160, right. The aberrations are quite high in the uh, electronic gadgets these days. And the ones that the old doctors used to do was perfect. They could even recognize, I mean, diagnose your problems with the stethoscope. They will keep a stethoscope on your chest, observe your breathing, and then they will say, This is your problem, or this is the health challenge that you have. But today's doctors find it very difficult to do that. Very few of them do it. Do you agree with me? So, uh, research method is something there where we are going to understand these intricacies. And then what are the kind of data collection that we have, is it, is it uh, uh, what is it, do you go for an interview to collect the data or do you send a questionnaire to collect the data or will you uh, simply float the questionnaire in the social media or newspaper and collect it randomly. So, then sampling techniques will also come where you will go for randomized sampling, stratified sampling, etc., etc. So, these are the technical terms that we will have to study which is uniform in all the humanity subjects because the same research methods are used in anthropology, psychology, public administration and so on, right. Now comes the very core of sociology that is sociological thinkers. Any discipline for that matter evolves and grows because of the theories by the thinkers. Fortunately, we have limited number of thinkers in sociology, we do not have to mug up too much of thinkers. Fundamentally, we need to understand about Karl Marx and uh, Emile Durkheim, Max Weber, Talcott Parson, Robert K. Merton and G. H. Mead. Again, they have come up with multiple theories. Again, for example, Karl Marx, you must be know, you must have heard about Karl Marx, right? Where did you hear about him? Ideology? Where? Which subject or which paper? Communism. So, uh, maybe you might have heard, uh, you might have learnt about him in the economics, right. Here, we will be studying from a sociological perspective, like what, what made him to come up with this kind of concept? Like, the exploitation that people were going through in the industries was the main trigger for Marx to see that the industries or the factories were actually draining or extracting the human essence of the people. Suppose 
the institute conducts class from morning 7 to night 9 o'clock saying that it is good for you. How long can you survive? Maybe 2 3 days that too with lot of difficulty. But if I if we conduct it for an year will you be able to really enjoy the classes? Will you be thrilled to come to the classes? Will you have that excitement to come to the class? No, you will come like machines, right? That is what Marx saw when he saw the workers working in the factories. He called them as cog in the machine. Cog in the machine refers to you. Have you seen that cycle bicycle, the uh, back tire of the bicycle where you have that uh, chain that revolves? So, you will you must have seen those teeth, right? That is called as cog. In the, even in machines, you will see these kind of teeth. They will join to one another and then function, right? So, that is what he called that these people have become cog in the machine. There is no human essence. They have become dull. They have become tired, exhausted. But they have to work because they have left their rural households. They have migrated to urban areas and now they are working like donkeys, not even like donkeys, even like machines. Right. So, this is the kind of situation with which he observed and then he came up with his own theories like historical materialism, mode of production, alienation and class struggle. Emil Durkheim came up with different theories. Again, uh, every thinker is coming from different schools of thought. Emil Durkheim's major uh, challenge was to establish sociology as a science. So, that is why he came up with a theory called social fact. He also conducted a study on suicide in terms of he gave a quantitative assessment of where and all suicides are happening, how suicides are happening, what are the factors that are leading to suicides and so on. So, that is one of his contributions and then he also spoke about religion and society. So, likewise we have Max Weber who comes from another perspective. See where uh, Marx only looked at the exploitation that was happening in the society and he spoke about a class revolution against the haves or the rich class, right. Emile Durkheim did only went for understanding how society influences individual behavior. Now, Max Weber goes to one more next level where he says for any action of the person there is a subjective interpretation of him or her. Right. So, suppose some of the some of you are sitting like this, right. Now, if you look at some of the YouTube channels, you might have heard in the body language uh, videos that holding like this is a resistance to what the other person is saying, which is not true. That is not true, that is not universal. That is why I say everything is society based. That may be true in the western society, but in Indian society this can be a mark of respect also, correct. So, why this person is holding or it may be because the person is having some pain in the hand and he one cannot press like this. So, holding like this and then pressing can also be the reason. So, Max Weber goes on to understand the subjective meaning of the actions of the people in a social circumstance. Then comes Talcott Parson who talks about social system and pattern variable. Now, these theories are little complicated. I will not, I, I may not be able to explain it in a simple term here, but what his effort was is to say how things are working in a very functional way in our society based on the uh, cooperation and collaboration of different systems in the society. Then comes Robert K. Merton who talks about latent and manifest function. Again, this is a very interesting theory because when we do something, we may have a specific intention of an outcome, but there could be an unintended intended outcome as well. For example, suppose this lady came here to sit in the front. The intention was to listen to the class properly, but she ended up meeting somebody else who was not her friend or she did not even know and they became friends. That was a, an unintended 
consequence right so this is how you can start looking at so for example government of karnataka came up with this free bus ride for women what was the intended consequence what was the intended consequence to empower women because women need more uh, facilities so that they can go to work their expenses can come down and they can have more mobility without much of expense right that must have been there i i don't i am not the form i i am not the person who was behind this idea principally i am not in favor of that idea as well but sociologically looking at it maybe that was the rationale behind that uh, scheme but what was the unintended consequence the visits to dharmasthala subramanya everything started more and more people traveled 100 kilometers to buy groceries i have seen this in my hometown where they would just get into the bus when anyway, a bus ride is free you know they will go to the city go one full round eat ice cream get some groceries or some sarees etc etc and then come back so these are the unintended consequences which they didn't even think about so when you become a bureaucrat when you are forming a policy with the understanding of these kind of theories what you can actually do is you can think about what could be an unintended consequence of this policy what can go wrong for example the uttar pradesh government gave tablets the digital devices to the students what is a intended consequence to provide that audio visual classes for the students so that it may become more attractive and uh, educative to the students what is the unintended consequence they may use it for other purposes who is taking care of their eyes they may have eye problem as well a lot of, i mean recently you might have heard the news of people people are going blind with watching the phone in the night as well right how many of you have this habit of watching the phone even after landing on the bed and how long others are not raising their hand they raising their hands that's it i know most of them do <laughs> okay so what and how long do you watch one hour sometimes two hours sometimes even as an ott netflix series next day morning some when your roommate wakes up then you will know oh, is it morning <laughs> right so that can lead to issues for your eyes it can impact your cognition and lot of other things right so i will give you a very simple psychological uh, reasoning that when i tell you that imagine that something is like this maybe it is going and uh, hitting this in this way and that is where the collision is happening and the blast is happening you can imagine yourself right if i provide you all that in a video form what is your head doing thinking about what will i have in have for snacks because the creative imagination capacity has been reduced because somebody is already doing it for you otherwise when you would read a book if the book is giving you some imageries through the writing of the writer that will help you to imagine things in your own way but now we are watching videos and videos are restricting our imaginative capacity so these are the unintended consequence while it may become attractive and easy for you to understand at the same time you are losing your own capacity so these are the kind of things that we will be able to learn and then conformity deviants reference groups are other theories by him self and identity is more psychological in nature in its approach though sociology he is a sociologist but he is also uh, coming from psychological perspective looking at how an individual identity develops and how society is also responsible in doing so for example when you were growing up when you were infants whether your parents said oh how cute you are how beautiful you are etc etc right yes or no yes or no boys isn't that the blunder that they made 
because we started imagining that we are the most beautiful people in the world because our parents said so. Do you agree with me? Question mark. Because it is very difficult to say, hey, I am not so beautiful, right? We all want to be beautiful or handsome, whatever you call. The idea that I wanted to share here is how society or the family members and their perspective towards you helps in evolving that identity for yourself, right? When your parents or elders said, hey, you are so intelligent, you also started presuming that you are intelligent. If they had said, dumb person, dumb child, katte <laughs> maga. <laughs> if the father keeps saying this, then the son may also perceive that maybe I am a donkey, maybe my intellectual abilities are not, not that great, right. So that is where the person's identity may get damaged because of the social circumstances. That is what Meet is trying to say there. Well, going to the next chapter, this is again very important chapter because it is talking about the stratification and mobility in the society. So, here we will be understanding how society is stratified. You must have studied strata of soil, right, in geography. The soil is divided into topo, what is that? Crust, mantle, core, toposphere is coming in, atmosphere, right. But stratification is there even there. Now, similarly, society is also divided into different strata. Now, in terms of class, if you want to look at, upper class, middle class, lower class, upper, upper, upper class, middle, middle class, middle, upper class or up, uh, lower middle class, etc., etc., right. So, these are the different stratifications. Similarly, we also had have caste system, right. Caste is also divided into different strata. Again, may not be so much evident in the present society. In today's society, we are not really bothered much, especially the younger generation do not even ask which is which is your caste, right. But earlier, people were not comfortable sitting with pe person from other castes, right. So, in order, but even then, even though you are not so cost conscious, not so cost conscious in general, when it comes to certain specific decisions, you are, many of you may be very cost conscious. For example, when it comes to marriage, Will you think of marrying some random person from different, any other caste or will you start thinking it is better to marry a person from the same caste? I mean, it could be mixed opinion, but generally you end up marrying a person from a similar caste. The reason is simple, the cultural language, etc., the lot of commonalities will be there, so it is easy for us to adjust, right. So, similarly, the uh, caste plays a major role even in terms of economics. For example, people from similar caste have their own unions, right? Okkaligara Sangha, Brahmandra Sangha, Lingayatra Sangha, Urubara Sangha, Idhelva. If you all are not at all caste conscious, you should not be joining any of these groups, but over a period of time, you also end up becoming part of these groups or you will end up taking benefit from these groups. If they are sponsoring your education, suppose, will you say, Nani caste lela nambala, and nima sponsorship ho beda, nima scholarship ho beda, and yenu beda and thelbit tira, ato scholarship bandha ka tagat tira. Togatir in tandre, then you are actually subscribing to the idea of having this kind of organization. So there are so many caste based organizations and caste is taking different shape. Now many castes are asking for OBC reservation and so on. So if you broadly look at it, in fact recently in Maharashtra, Marathas were only asking for OBC reservation, if you have gone through the newspapers. So these are the kind of things that are happening in our society and some or other way there is a stratification that is based on the caste even today. In different contexts maybe, right. So, likewise race, gender, ethnicity, etc., etc. are also something that we will be studying. Similarly, we will also study what are the theories on stratification, why stratification happens in the society and what is social mobility.
the movement of a person from one strata to another is social mobility. So, we will be understanding what is social mobility and how a person moves from one strata to other. Work and economic life is a little simpler topic where we will be understanding about social organization of work and uh, unorganized sector, organized sector and labor and society and what are the issues of labor and so on. Then politics and society is where we will be studying about power, politics, political parties, how do they function, what are the uh, activist groups, what are the pressure groups etc, etc, what is bureaucracy, power elite because they play a major role in the running of the society, right. Recently we have finished the elections, general elections, did not you see the influence of politicians upon you by listening to their speeches, their uh, uh, whatever the stage shows, road shows etc, etc. I mean maybe, I mean when I say you do not take it personally, look at from a society from a larger perspective. When I say did not you get influence, it is not like I am asking you alone. The society gets influenced in general, right. When there is a road show by Modi or Rahul Gandhi, do not don't you see people going crazy and standing in the queue, why do they go? Why do they go? You being the rational intelligent students, why did not you stop them from going? Huh? Yesterday, uh, the cricket team, what a road show, right? Is not it a madness? It is better to watch and watch them on the television than seeing them in the in person because you will not be able to see them properly. And even if you see them properly, what is that you are going to do? They are also made of the same skin, same muscle, same tissue. Is not it doctor? Is there any difference between a celebrity and a common person or a some, some slum dweller? The biology is same, right? Nothing goes here and there, no? So, then what is there to see? Huh? You can do it even in social media, no? But will they remember that you had come to appreciate me? They will not even recognize you. Even after a month or two, if you meet them in the airport, they will see you are some random person, correct? So, then what is that you are getting by appreciating their achievement? Did you get any money? They got crores of money for winning the game, winning the match, right? They might must have got so many other uh, additional bonus or whatever. Did you get anything? I mean, I am not against appreciation or celebration or anything of that sort. I am just saying, I mean, one minute. Let letter finish your argument. Okay. Can I counter you? Yeah. Most of the sports persons, I mean, I am a coach for a couple of sports persons themselves, budding cricketers, right now also. They wake up, wake up at 4 a.m., get their physical exercises done, go to the coach wherever they have to play and they play for 3 to 4 hours in the morning before going to the school or college whatever and then they come back in the evening and then they go to the ground and do their hard work till 9 or 10 and then again sleep for maybe whatever 4 or 5 hours and then get back the next morning. How many of you have similar hard routine for yourself? Raise up hard routine where you are working hard, you are sweating like anything. Have you, have you watched this movie called Bhag Milka Bhag? Did you see him filling the mug with his sweat? It motivates for a moment. In fact, I am very much influenced by this movie. If I had given my third oh, uh, yeah, third attempt that is because of this movie. However, by looking at their uh, hard work, what is the motivation that you are drawing is my question. Is 
that's in the head that's in the head does it get into the practice i hope it gets into practice that is when everyone will become an achiever right so uh, yeah so that is where we will be studying about politics and society and then we will also study about religion and society because it's again very important social institution that influences the practices in society be it your day to day activities to say uh, say for example the many hindu families will wake up with the voice of ms subulakshmi saying what kausalya supraja rama right whereas other religion may wake up with azan or maybe christians will wake up with something else right so every religion and their religion also gives you a lifestyle right so that is where religion is also associated with culture and culture language everything influences the society and social harmony so that is where we will be studying about religion and system of kinship is again very important chapter in sociology where we will be understanding how do we build social relationships right so currently we also have become slaves of english and we also call people like cousins and uncles and aunts but actually if you look at the indian uh, social structure an atte is atte chikkama is chikkama but in english both are aunts there is a difference between atte and chikkama chikkappa and mama right uh, uh, anna and bhava are different atti and akka are different so likewise the kis system of kinship is will teach us how do we build these relationships in our society and how do that evolve over a period of time and how does it influence in patriarchal society matriarchal society patrilineal society matrilineal society and so on and we will also look at what are the contemporary trends what is happening in the present society in terms of kinship because now uh, even if you are not blood relatives still you may consider somebody as your brother and sister or that kind of brotherhood may continue to exist uh, in the current society then social change how society is changing over a period of time because society is a very dynamic organization per se so that is what we will be studying and how development and dependency are uh, evolving and how science and technology has also contributed education has contributed these are the things that we will be studying in the last chapter so totally 10 chapters in paper 1 and then we will be studying about indian society where we will be studying about the thinkers of india because sociology being a discipline of west we had to indianize it to make it a discipline for india so these are the thinkers who worked on indianizing the western discipline then we will be understanding what are the impact of colonial rule uh in the sense right from the portuguese to dutch to uh, english french etc etc how colonial rule has influenced indian society and how modernization of indian tradition has happened and rural and agrarian structure how rural society is still structured and situated in the current system and what are the uh, idea of villages have how many of you are from villages pure villages i mean you you were born and brought up in a village okay. the other urban children how many of you have gone and stayed in a village at least for a week not in a resort don't tell me halli mane anta ittu hagagi right actual village where there may not be electricity there may not be uh toilets will not we will not be within the households it will be far away place where you have to go and uh, walk walk and go all this kind of difficult scenario where you will not get mobile network right you must go and stay in such villages to understand the real social i mean village life especially if you if you could go to um, western ghat region malana region like shivamogga tirthalli shirsi sagara koppa etc etc in this the rainy season you will have an excellent life where they will give you beautiful uh, uh papad which is 
ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಇದೇನು ಎಣ್ಣೆಲಿ ಹುರಿದ ಹಪ್ಪಳನು ಸಿಕ್ತದೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕೆಂಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದು ಇದು ಮಾಡಿದ ಹಪ್ಪಳನು ಸಿಕ್ತದೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಸೋಶಿಯಾಲಜಿ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಥಿಯರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಪುಟ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೇಪರ್ ಟೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ರೈಬಲ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಸಿ ದ ಅಡ್ವಾಂಟೇಜ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಓವರ್ಲ್ಯಾಪಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಯು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟ್ರೈಬಲ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಯು ಮೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪಂಚಶೀಲ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ನೆಹರು ವಿತ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಟ್ರೈಬಲ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಓವರ್ಲ್ಯಾಪ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಪಿಟೀಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪೇಪರ್ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಅಡ್ವಾಂಟೇಜ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಡೋ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ರಿಪೀಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೇಪರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯನೈಸ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಸೇಮ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಪಿಟೀಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೇಪರ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ರಿಪೀಟೆಡ್ ಯುವರ್ again it is a continuation of how rural and agrarian transformation is happening where you will see rural development program community development program if you read india air book you will see a series of government programs integrated rural development program uh, vocational education in rural areas swarna jayanti gram swarojgar yojana etc etc so that is again green revolution is also there in your economics i suppose you must have studied about green revolution no? so these are all the overlap with gs and this is there in your geography urbanization and industrialization if you look at 12th standard in crt you have this whole chapter given in their own uh, in that way in, in in a geographical way you just need to understand from a sociological way in the sense work what is a working class what is the structure what is the growth or what is the mobilization or mobil what is the class mobilization so for example there are working class uh unions labor unions etc etc so and then politics of politics and society is again uh, copy paste from paper 1 social movements in modern india like peasant movements women's movement backward class movement caste movement etc etc again this comes in your modern india if you look at spectrum i don't know if you are referring spectrum you will have a list of tribal movements mapilla revolution this revolution that revolution all of them are part of this population dynamics is again same thing from geography ncert where you will be seeing birth rate death rate migration and so on so this is why, why sociology becomes a little easier in paper 2 because a lot of things are coming from or overlapping with either paper 1 or with the gs the only challenge is how do we write answer in a sociological way when you are writing an optional paper you should not i mean your answer should not look like a gs answer even if they are asking a gs question for example they can ask about pradhan mantri aawas yojana they will only give this word pradhan mantri aawas yojana right for 5 5 marks or 10 marks now you should not be writing about the provision of provisions of pradhan mantri aawas yojana and who is eligible who is not eligible that doesn't matter in sociology paper but how providing a house or housing for the poor is establishing or helping in social mobility and giving stability for them is the interest of a sociology student in a sociology paper so that is why if you understand paper 1 properly then it is easy for you to apply that knowledge into these kind of questions like five year planning was one question in one of the years in sociology right they can ask manrega mg narega as one simple i mean they want you to get trapped with gs answer and that is where your skill comes where you have to write a sociological answer so that it becomes a kind of attractive and differentiating factor from other uh, answers then challenge of social transformation like what is the developmental issues like 
maybe migration, maybe submergence of villages, tribal villages because of development of dams, etc., etc., and then caste conflicts, violence against women, poverty, deprivation, and so on. So, this is more like understanding whole society. So, where you have overlap with paper 1 in paper 2 or paper 2 in paper 1 and a lot with GS specifically the modern history right. So, uh, looking at what are the books that you will have to refer, you will have to refer NCRTs that which is compulsory in any any optional for that matter unless you are thorough with NCRT it will be difficult for you to go ahead. So, two books of class 11 and two books of class 12 and then you can choose one of these books Harlambus and Holborn is a book which is very similar to G C Leong for geography like I mean I do not know if you are still referring G C Leong for your geography, but for us if you want to study geography in a right way G C Leong is compulsorily have to be studied thoroughly right. So, likewise this uh, Arlombus is one famous book for sociology. After that, you can cup refer couple of igno materials. Not necessary to go through the whole bunch of materials. Maybe for some of the topics, you can pick up some of the information from there. And then for paper two, you can choose books from this list, or maybe you can choose uh, again. Generally, there is one more uh, book called Essentials of Sociology. A lot of students ask me is it good enough to refer that book. It is decent book to get the basic uh, idea about the uh, subject, but it is not the not sufficient enough only to uh, I mean it is not sufficient enough to write a full fledged means that is what essentials of sociology Nitin Sangwan right, but it is a very good decent book. I am not asking you not to buy it because it is decent book. So, Basically, it is like uh, Lakshmi Khan for polity. So, what is Lakshmi Khan basically? For me, it is like a notes. The constitution has been written down in a beautiful way, point by point, so that it is almost like a note, it is not no more a textbook, correct. So, likewise, essentials of sociology gives a very detailed uh, kind of notes for you to uh, understand the sociological things. Then it is also always good to read newspapers because a lot of things keep happening in the society, the current issues you can pick up those things or examples in your answer especially when you are writing paper 2. Paper 1 may not give you much scope to write newspaper examples, but paper 2 will give you enough scope to write examples from newspapers. So, that is about yeah that they were some of the examples again this is something that I tell whenever anybody asks where else to study, study from your society. Whenever you are traveling in a metro, going for a walk, sitting in a garden or going to a sabzi mandi, wherever you go you will get to learn something from the behaviors of other people. So, that you can easily observe. Open for question and answer so that I can uh, quickly address them if you have any questions ok. Agents of social change are many for example, science and tech is one, education is one, infrastructure could be one more or uh, development is one more, religion is another social change, media social media is another agent of social change. So, likewise multiple social agents in the sense uh, how do we say this? Say, you can you can uh, develop or you can bring a change in the society. For example, how did Barcelona bring a change in the society through literature and yeah. So, that is one agent of social change right. So, maybe if for example, for Dalit movement a lot of Dalit writers have written so many poems right that is another agent of social change. So, likewise you can start looking at so many agents of social change, it, it is oh no, 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 not that agent, agent is social I mean agents of social change is what are the uh, how do I say uh, 
uh, what are the tools of social change you may say that. So, agents are not like the middleman, agents are the uh, it could be a person or a thing or a group of people or an organization which is leading to a social change. Like Abhinava Mantapa, what is it called? Vasavana Anubhava Mantapa. Anubhava Mantapa was a an organization for a social change, right? So, like this. Yes. I will tell you why. Uh, see, generally, students want ready made notes and they do not want to put their own hard work. Hence, most of the sociology students have been dependent on Mahapatra sir's notes. Mahapatra is the teacher who has been teaching in Vajiram and Ravi for years together, or the notes that have been derived from that notes. The problem is the evaluator is getting the same monotonous examples. People are mugging up the same information and vomiting it in the paper. They are not using their own ideas, analysis and thoughts. That is one of the major stagnation for many students why they are not able to get great score in sociology because Every examination examiner himself or herself is also a human being, right? They also need diversity in their answers. And when you give your own flavor, that is when people or the examiner will give you better score. So that is why I always say, whenever, I mean whichever the option that you choose, you can definitely refer something that is already very famous in the sense, for example, for some subject Shubhra Ranjan is a, I have heard P S I R. Okay. So I have heard she's again. I don't know. I'm not propagating any person here. I'm giving an example, right? So maybe that notes is very valid and very uh, credible. Maybe a case. But if you just muck up all the information that is given there and write, the examiner. Exam. I mean, she's a. Uh, I mean, teacher for so many years. So examiner has understood the flavor of what is coming from her notes. The moment he sees that flavor, naturally it creates a block. That is why people are struggling whenever they are going with ready made or only the same books that are referred. Even in GS for that matter, for example, today in today's newspaper I was reading, I do not know if you have already read, how many of you read newspapers, at least Hindu for that matter. If you look at today's Hindu, there is one picture where farmers in Andhra Pradesh are using saris to protect the moisture content in the soil. This is one picture. Okay. Have you seen this picture? Did you even observe this picture? Huh? Okay, you are reading it in the evening. If you look at this today's newspaper, you will find this picture. Now, as a GS student, when you are writing any issue of agriculture or environment related, specifically in terms of mulching and other things, you can give this example as an alternative to plastic. I do not know if you have really gone into the fields and observed how actual farming happens. A lot of farmers had started using plastic to ensure the moisture content of the soil. But the unintended consequence of that is that there is no aeration to the soil. The soil is not able to breathe because the plastic is a very thick material. Only with small holes that is not sufficient for the soil to breathe. So, that is where the whatever the gas exchange that had to happen between the soil and atmosphere did not happen. Whereas, a cloth, a fabric is a better material to do the same. So, now they are experimenting with long saris. Now, if you give this kind of example in your answer, even in GS for that matter, that makes your answer more flavorable than others. That is when you will get some extra marks. 
that is where originality is something that is very very essential. So, you should always develop that originality in your answer writing. Otherwise, everyone will write in the same way, then it becomes monotonous. It, it, this, this principle is applicable to essay or GS or any paper for that matter. Did I answer your question? Can you be little louder? There is a noise of this AC. I think you did not listen to me. Did I ask you to refer too many books? I just asked you to think on your own, create your own content, your own style, develop your own style. This needs more of brain work, thought process, which can happen even when you are walking to the classroom going back. We presume that study happens only when you are sitting on the study table, that is where we are stuck again. Thought process happens wherever you are, even sitting, uh, I mean when you are about to go to sleep, still you can think, right. So, what I said is, you can refer these materials for the information, but when you are writing your answer, you do not have to replicate the same information in your answer speech. You have to bring your own originality, that is when you get good score. I give you my own example. I did not study from Mahapatrasa's notes. I studied from a different source altogether. One of my friends who was a hardcore student of that notes and that sir, who had read sociology so many times, he had finished all Indian books, he also finished a couple of foreign author books on sociology, was not able to clear things. The reason was, he had become another Mahapatra, because he had read that note so many times. He would, if he starts speaking, it would look like the same notes is getting enacted or verb has, has gotten a verbatim for that. That is where he got stuck. Whereas, in terms of knowledge, I was much lesser than him when it comes to sociology, but my answers were original. That generally gets appreciated. Even in the interview, it is not about how much of information that you throw into the panel that is appreciated. Of course, you should know the basic of things, but how do you, what is your analytical thinking? What is your ability to uh, in, I mean analyze or correlate and these are the things that UPSC generally looks for. Because as an administrator, then you will not have time to refer to the rule book and apply things. You should have that common sense to apply the knowledge that you already have. That is why they want you to read so many subjects, so that you have some understanding of what is happening in different areas of life, right. So, it is not about the time is about how do you want to apply. Got it? That is what I always suggest. Read one book multiple times and reading multiple multiple books once. This is Yes, and when I say read book not once, multiple times. Yes, because every time you read a book, you may get new ideas or new things coming out of that. And thinking need not happen with the in the absence of book alone. It can happen even when you are reading the chapters. So read the same book multiple times and think and create your own understanding and analysis. Of course, I said paper 1, I am, if you want to read uh, Harlombus, that is good enough. Again, when you ask, if you are asking number of books, read minimum books. I am not saying only one book, mean minimum books. Maybe if you take literal meaning of one book, then you may get stuck there. So, then you may start counting, I have only said 4 NCRTs and then 1 Harlombus, 
then it that itself adds up to 5. So, literal when I say oh, read one book, minimum books and maximum outcome, that is what I believe. Ideally, I mean from a very theoretical perspective, it takes 500 hours to master one subject. That is what it is, where you will be master in that subject for the UPSC optional. I am not saying you will become a PhD in that, but whatever is required for UPSC, you would have to dedicate at least 500 hours to get a very good hold in one option. Not necessarily only the class, I am saying put everything put together, qualitatively 500 hours is what you will have to put. Yes, that is what I mean. But again when I said qualitatively is because sometimes students say that I am sitting for studying, but they do not study. That is negated. Again depends on how many hours you want to put in a day, right. So, if you put 10 hours in a day, you may finish in 50 days, which is possible. I mean I am not saying that is not possible, provided you should be in a capacity to put those 10 hours qualitative 10 hours in a day. For example, I, when I teach I finish first chapter in one class, because that is what it requires, you do not have to dig, dig deep holes into that. So, it is all about optimal study. So, likewise again uh, if you are putting 6 hours accordingly you can calculate maybe around 90 days or whatever. Any other questions? It need not be last one. Absolutely. For example, uh, last last year I guess they had asked one question on work from home culture. Now you cannot say this is out of syllabus. It is syllabus in the society. So you need to keep developing or keep yourself open to what is happening in the society, because you will not get a one specific answer for these kind of questions, you need to frame it right then and there. Of course, your conceptual clarity will help you to frame it, but you need to be aware or you need to be prepared for these kind of surprise questions uh, in so sociology and that that is what it makes a very interesting subject, is not it. If you know all the questions before going to the test, what is the fun in giving the exam? It is like, but when you are actually going into the exam, sociology throws you these kind of challenges where you will be able to play with your knowledge and these are the questions that can give you an edge. When you are good with your framing of answers, it can give you an edge. Any other questions? And it is almost 5 o'clock. Can we conclude today's session? Yeah. See you all. Have a, I mean, just a, just a minute. Somebody has, uh, as like a more sub points or sub topics mentioned in the syllabus, do the sociology become a very lengthy subject to read or write? Okay, I will quickly answer this question. Generally, there is an assumption that sociology is very short in terms of its syllabus, but he has asked a different question. Because of the subtopics and so many other things, does it become a very lengthy uh, subject as such? Ideally, all the optional subjects are almost of the same length. There is no much difference. And that is what I say. Every optional subject has subject has its own uniqueness in its in its its own way. So, again, it doesn't become lengthy in terms of learning the basic concepts. If you ask me, 60% of sociology gets over with four chapters of paper 1. The sociology as a discipline, sociological thinkers, social stratification and social kinship. If you are mastering these four chapters, your 60 percent of sociology is over because all the concepts come in these four chapters. Rest all is application of the same in other, say for example, whatever you study in these four chapters itself is applied in politics and society, religion and society, work and economic life, social change etcetera, etcetera. So, 
it is all about how do we approach the subject. So, it is not lengthy or short, it is a very optimal paper that sense. All right, see you all. Have a great evening and keep studying well and achieve whatever you would like to achieve. Get whatever the service that you would like to get and contribute very well for this country. Thank you so much.